I can't sleep at night. Every night, there's not one day that I haven't got pain. And it's enormous pain. I live on painkillers. I can't breathe more normal. This is Yanni Rod and his friend Henny playing at a wedding. Yanni is a prominent businessman, a father and a husband. He's well liked and respected by the community of Kuruman in the Northern Cape. He's also a dedicated Christian, but he's ill. He's been diagnosed with mesothelioma, a cancer of the lung lining. The last year, every day was a suffering for me. Every day I've got to, I, I get up, like sometimes, some days I can't get up. I stay in bed because I haven't got the power. Yanni worked on the asbestos mines near Kurman when he was young. He built ventilation systems. Thirty years later, he was diagnosed with mesothelioma. It can take up to 40 years for this disease to develop. My greatest fear is leaving my family behind. Um, I've made provisions for them. Um, and I've, I know that they will be looked after, looked after. But I'm still young. And if I didn't get this disease, I could have spent another 10 or 15 years with him. A month after this interview, Yanir Rod died, leaving his wife, Hanil, and kids. He was only 49 years old. Most people in the Kalahari town of Kuruman have seen death many times. Today, Yanni Rod takes this road alone, like many who worked on the asbestos mines before him. Today, they lie in cemeteries all over Kuruman. Nearly everyone here can count at least three people they know who died from asbestos exposure. Many fear that they too, and those they love, will end up here. In South Africa, asbestos was first discovered near Prisca, then Guruman in the late 1880s. In desperate need of work, thousands were drawn to the area. This footage shows the complete lack of safety in those days. Workers were totally ignorant of the health hazards they faced. In the Northern Cape, mainly blue asbestos was mined. Locals call it kharang because it looks like cotton thread. Of all of them, Blue asbestos is the most dangerous. Its needle-like shape has the potential to sting a human lung and stay there. While brown and white asbestos can create cancer of the lung and asbestosis, blue asbestos causes the most lethal cancer of them all, mesothelioma. A number of multinationals once owned these mines. They finally landed up in the hands of Jeffco, a subsidiary of Genco. Then in 1989, Genco sold all its shares to Jeffco. Jeffco in turn sold its mines to the South African government. Asbestos was used all over the world for products like water pipes, roofs, and brake pads on cars. 30 kilometers from Kuruman is Khamopedi village. Most people here were employed by South African mining company Jeffco. In 1996, when the last asbestos mine was closed, mainly like these miners, were left without work and ill from asbestos exposure. <laughs> Khabai Newe Itang has six children. He's diagnosed with second degree asbestosis. This disease is caused by the breathing of fine asbestos dust, which causes a reaction in the lung. Itang worked for Jeffco for 29 years, mining blue asbestos. Today he's 60. No one works in his family. All rely on his state pension. Haki 
Thành ca sĩ ca sĩ mà Ngà quê chê đi Dạ ca sĩ Ô bồi Chú cơ bụng sơ quay là ca hỏi dạ nó còn dạ nó Bụng ngà chí bà chá lạ 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 bà chá Six kilometers from Itang's house lies an unrehabilitated asbestos dump. The wind blows in the direction of the village. Almost every day, villagers breathe the asbestos polluted air. Itang is concerned and angry that his kids' lives are compromised. He fears that they too will end up ill like him. There are many in this village who are ill from asbestos exposure. One of them is Itang's friend, John Silike. He too is diagnosed with lung cancer, Mr. Thilioma. It took only a year of working with blue asbestos for John to get sick. He may not live another year. It's like we don't have a rest. We don't live in Kaya. We can't do no one. We don't have to keep. We are not going to come. We are going to keep. 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 John's house was built where blue asbestos was once stored. In his yard, asbestos fibers are everywhere. His family walks and plays on this ground every day. His house is not the only one like this in the village. The community of Kuruman has decided to take action. They want to do something about the pollution and the increasing number of people that die from asbestos exposure. They're suing Jeffco. To do this, many go to Moffat Mission, where their lawyers operate. Not only ex-miners come here, but also the families of those who died. Khosi Imang once worked for Jeffco. He says he too has asbestosis. These former miners say state compensation for their illness is not enough. They also want Jeffco to pay. <laughs> The <laughs> Ferias Williams is a field lawyer. As in Jose Mang's case, she has encouraged many to bring all their documents. She is here to start a database of all possible claimants. She says her main challenge is that most of her clients are old and illiterate. What to do with the registration process is we take down the details which will be documented, which will have full future, where we get um, information like whether they've been certified, their medical benefit examinations, whether they've um, gone for that, their work history. If they win their case, these lawyers plan to set up a fund for those who worked on the mines and are ill. This is not the only issue. Occupational lawyer Richard Spohr says his clients are not only suing Jeffco for their health, but also for the damage done to the environment by the asbestos mining and the dams left behind. There has been environmental um, 
pollution and devastation on a scale that's virtually unmatched anywhere in the world. Um, we're talking about millions of tons um, of a deadly and very resilient fiber. The cleanup process um, focuses very much on the old mines and the old dumps. But to date, there's been virtually no effort at all to clean up the broader environmental pollution, which poses a very serious health risk um, to neighboring communities. From our perspective, GenCor's responsibility is open-ended. They haven't addressed the pollution. They haven't cleaned up the mess that they've created. People are being exposed on a daily basis. From the day they finally clean up the mess in the Northern Cape, well, from that day, we can start counting down 50 years to when we'll see the last case. But until and unless they clean up, people will continue to become sick indefinitely. Jeffco refused to grant us an interview. They say they're involved in a court action and litigation around this matter. To date, there are no statistics on the exact number of ex-miners who were exposed and are ill from blue asbestos. Many have gone back home to the rural areas, and others have died. There are asbestos mines in many parts of South Africa. A number of them are not rehabilitated. It's taken more than 10 years for the people of Kuruman to finally see a site like this. Vet Bank Mine is being rehabilitated by a government contracted company, Eco Rehab. They say it will take another 12 months of hard work to finish this project. To rehabilitate this mine alone will cost the state 12.7 million rand. We do create, in our initial stages of rehabilitation, literally a volcano of fiber into the air. There's no other way to do it. The best we try to suppress the problem is keep the areas that we physically work as wet as possible. We can't do it to the ideal, but we do the best we can under the circumstances. We're not ignoring it. Our methodology is purely an intention to bring the system back to its original condition. What we are going to do here is to combine the two copies by first reshaping the dump. Its slopes will be the natural angle of the copies and we will be filling the gap between the copies so that it will become one extended uh, copy and will have the look of one uh, little mountain and it should blend in. It will be a grazing area once we're finished. Once this dump has been rehabilitated, it will be monitored for five years. Ecologists and pollution experts have to visit this site every six months. For rehabilitation to be a success, the soil should not erode and plants should have grown. Their challenge is teaching the community to keep away from the site until it's back to its original state. Henning Flay, another village near Guruman. For this community, proper rehabilitation cannot come soon enough. This is Mapalone Primary School. There are 51 learners from grade one to grade four. Most are between seven and 11 years old. The school is built on an old asbestos mine dump. These learners are not aware of the dangers of asbestos fibers found all over. They play carelessly in a contaminated soil and breathe polluted air. The school building is also built with asbestos bricks. According to records, the dump was rehabilitated 20 years ago by Jeffco, its previous owners, yet fibers have found their way out of the storage facility. The dump was once covered with a thin layer of gravel. Over time, the soil has eroded, leaving this dump exposed and releasing the deadly fibers back into the air of Henning Flay. A year ago, musician Yanni Roth died of mesothelioma. His wife, Hanili, says she knew that one day 
should have to accept his death, but she says it will take an eternity to come to terms with him not being there. The client here in the all that. Um, Papa, pass my paw. I can have my paw to go. How verdaid like you for so a client? Eindelijk, for the wall is my paw. He is very vicious. Um, he is a star. If it's dunker wordt, then first he has to be out. And he says, Don't be star, this my Papa. This holds you fast. And they will think on the seer. But I have a lot of memories. A lot of memories. He had not the whole time after him. His weight was very good. He was on the pill, what he had to do with pain to use. We had to go to the seerstof bottle along his bed. We had to go to the hospital and go to the hospital. We had to go to the hospital. We were bang that his lungs te gewoon draag aan die sierstof, dan wil jy dit nie te ver oop draai nie. En dan sê hy, draai oop, ek kry nie alsom nie. Ek sal die, die laaste week in die hospital, en die hoeft hy nooit vergeet nie. En ek kan nie, dit bly voor my oor. Dit was een woensdagochtend, 20 voor 5, hier die hospital my gebel, en sê ek dit nie. Ek het in die hospital ingestap, en ek het by hom gaan staan, en sy voete was geswaal, en sy hande was geswaal, so ek het sy ringe afgehaal, en sy oorloosie afgehaal, en toe ek by hom kom, het ek net sy hand gevat, en ek het vir hom gesê, ek is by jou, weet jy, hy het net sy oor so opgetel, hy het vir my gekyk, en net so gemaak, het sy oor toegemaak, en dit is voorbij. Like Jannie Roach, many patients with mesothelioma end up in Rose Park Hospital in Bloemfontein. There, they're treated by Dr. Fairwood. Any patient that's uh, coughing chronically over a period of time and doesn't respond on any treatment should have a chest x-ray. If you're in the uh, Western Cape, you may assume that it may be TB, most probably. In Northern Cape, we feel you must assume that it may be mesothelioma. It's difficult to diagnose mesothelioma. If an X-ray is not enough to tell how far the cancer is spread, patients are given a CT scan. X-rays only take photographs of the whole lung, while the CT scan provides more detailed information on sections of the lung. This is the CT scan. Now the patient is lying on his back. That's his vertebra, that's the ribs, that's the shoulder blades. This is the normal right side. On the left side, there's more density. There's even a mass on the uh, margin. And the lung is clearly smaller than on the other side. So this is very suggestive of a thick uh, membrane around. Most probably, because of his asbestos history, a mesothelioma. In the end stages, they can't breathe at all. Uh, lungs completely unfunctional. They can have severe chest pains because of infiltration of the uh, cancer. And usually in that stage, uh, it's terminal and there's nothing to be done. Last year, James Renosta died from mesothelioma. He too was Dr. Fairwood's patient. After a diagnosis, a patient generally lives up to 18 months. James only survived another 12. When he died, his daughter Yolanda and his wife were there. It is unbeschrijfelijk hoe jouw mens moet hanker en en spook om te leven. Die asem was bij je kort en elke dag moest ik en mijn kinders toezien. Ons moet kijk naar die man wat ons hier ken op die bedje. Hij was vreselijk geswel. En op een stadium met die bloed beginne opgooi. Sy loop, het verswak. Hy kon nie meer loop nie. Dit het nie geleen. Dan my ma, ek wil wonder my ma verskrik en weie. Sy het om altyd opgetel en voor en toe gelig en tot ons aangegaan. Maar wat eer gewees het is. Dan. Toe het moet sien. Nee. Plaat is die asem. 
ma ma tetsz tetsz ahvar tetsz szikti piti vár ez a ti ma itt szót ez a ti ma kétnomi ma in obi omlak ez a ti nem fú mi ma stáni bája fej szép parád bája mit mi ma iket a pák nőre en en die kamer waar ik gesterf het is ek baie keer so wat druk in hart seer voel en ek sit daar en dan kom dit so by my jy sien dit wat gebeur het groot daas soos met sy verjaarsdag vaderdag toe moes alleen sit by die tafel en bid ons mis om by soos vir hy daar dan weet ons vijf uur, hy kom my stop. En dan toe ons gewag, want ek het al op die tyd by die hekke gaan staan, maar dan sê ek, ek vergeet, hy gaan eerst te kom, of hy was baie lief die, ek moet, dan maak ek die van my dan, en toe ook, maar dan al die klas ek op hierdie, dan ons ook my sien nie daar nie. Dit is moeilijk vir my. Ek is meer by die begrafplas as wat ek in my huis is. En as ek my druk voel, dan gaan ek graf toe, gaan sit ek. Ek weet, dit beteken niks daar nie. Kuruman Hospital is part of the problem. It has no lung specialist, only community doctors. It has no way of providing a correct diagnosis for a suspected victim of asbestos. Apart from HIV, AIDS, TB, the third killer disease, in our Kalahari node here, it's asbestosis. It really pains me that my colleague who died recently from this terrible disease never had any proper checkup all his lifetime. If there were mechanisms in place, I believe this man's life would have long been saved. George Bakana is a laundry supervisor at the hospital. He regularly performs autopsies, but he is not paid to do them. He learned how to from a former doctor. As best as he can choose, ka do musadua ka deno na liyoni. Ya no ki chukilo ko heta ka ki ukilo na ka eri lena ki anzamel. Two. George performs autopsies to help families establish cause of death so they can get compensation. Six, seven, eight, he keeps nine, his own statistics seven, eight, of how many are suspected of dying from asbestos-related diseases. There are many. Virginia Lizolo is 47 years old, a certified mesothelioma case. She worked at Jeffco for only two years, from 1978 to 1980. 22 years ago, she stopped sorting blue asbestos at Jeffco. She's only realized now that she is dying. She's a mother of six. Her youngest son is only two years old. She does not have long to live. Mesothelioma produces water in her lungs. She will drown in her own fluid. <laughs> Yana <coughs> 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 Kau buat ini korang cuba bola ya, bukan korang. Ha, 
Hongwe nka to hongwe nka sitwe.